Hello, and welcome to the Stellantis Tech and AI podcast. I'm Dale Jewett, your host. Today's episode dives into a game-changing innovation that could reshape the future of electric propulsion. We're talking about magnets. Yes, magnets. And how Stellantis is partnering with Nyron Magnetics to pioneer a rare earth-free alternative that's not only more sustainable, but also unlocks new possibilities in motor performance. I'm joined here with Sunisha Jerkovich. He is our Vice President of Propulsion Systems Engineering at Stellantis, and we'll be exploring how iron nitride magnets can revolutionize electric motor design, strengthen supply chains, and push the boundaries of what's possible in vehicle electrification. So let's get into it. Sunisha, thanks for taking some time to talk with us today. Thank you for having me, Dale. It's a pleasure. And before we get going with all the important questions, I, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking a minute or two and telling us a little bit about yourself and how you have the position you have inside Stellantis. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I, my name is Sinisha Yurkovich. As you said, I'm, I'm responsible for electric drive portion of uh, propulsion systems at Stellantis. Uh, I've been with the company for about six years, and I, I feel extremely lucky to work in this space and, and to work for, for Stellantis on electrification. Has electrification and propulsion always been a favorite of yours? Yes, I have actually spent almost 20 years working on, on uh, vehicle electrification. In fact, my entire career in automotive industry has always been on propulsion electrification space. All right. Well, that's great news because then I expect you'll know a lot about what we're going to talk about today. And let's start with the big picture. Why are magnets such a critical component in modern propulsion systems? That's a great question. I think uh, magnets are often misunderstood or not understood at all. Uh, and, and really the way to think about them or to explain the magnets is I would start by posing a different question. What happens if we don't have magnets? Magnets are often thought as a energy storage device, which is incorrect. That's not what, what they are. Magnetic force is one of the four, four fundamental forces of nature. And so what magnets do, they are, they are a medium in energy conversion, not an energy storage storage device. And, and really the best way to explain it, the way it was explained to me many, many years ago when it clicked is if, if we draw a parallel to gravity, and if I have an object that I wish to move from point A to point B in a vertical path, all I need to do is give it a little nudge, and the gravity does most of the work in converting that potential into a kinetic energy. So the magnets can actually do the same thing in converting various forms of energy from one run to another. Now, imagine if we did not have a gravity. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't be able to move the object, but we would have to actually provide an external energy to do it. And so same is true with permanent magnets. If we don't have a permanent magnet, we would have to create it in other ways. We'd have to add energy to the system, which of course becomes more expensive, less efficient, and, and more complex. So that's why they are everywhere. That's why we've grown to be dependent on them in this industry, but also in many other industries. So we're talking about magnets, and I have a sense that a lot of that discussion has become important because electrified or EVs have become a bigger part of the conversation in the mobility industry over the last several years. Uh, is that correct? And are there other uses for magnets in what we do? Yes, that's that's correct. The, the electrification of the vehicle has brought this issue to the forefront only because the electrified powertrain seems to be now our biggest user of permanent magnets. However, the magnets are everywhere in our vehicles from seatbelt sensors to simple position sensors to really audio systems and, and every 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 component you can imagine in the car. So they are they are everywhere in our industry. And as I said in my previous comment, they are actually widely used in, in other industries as well. So very, very important materials for, for technology and engineering in general. Okay, Sunisha. As I study permanent magnets and, and electric vehicle propulsion, quite frequently I run across the term rare earth minerals. And can you help me out by explaining to our audience exactly what those are and why they are important to this discussion? 
So the rare earth, as, as the word suggests, it refers to the group of materials that, that are relatively rare in, in our environment and, and, and difficult to mine. In the permanent magnets world, we, we are typically talking about neodymium, uh, dysprosium, terbium, those kinds of materials. Uh, and as, as the word suggests, not only that they're rare, but they're also relatively difficult to mine in, in an environmentally friendly way. And then many of those those materials recently have had significant geopolitical implications. Okay, but I take it they're important for the performance of magnets in EV motors. They, they are the essential part of, of the magnets of the EV motors. So the magnet itself that we use today or the most of the industry uses today is, is made almost entirely out of the rare earth neodymium, neodymium type of material. Okay, so then recently, you were in Minnesota because Stellantis, through our Stellantis Ventures Fund, has partnered with a company named Niron Magnetics, and they have a different take on the whole permanent magnet issue. Can you help explain to me what I, Niron is doing and how it is different? So in the simplest terms, what Niron is doing is creating a synthetic version of the permanent magnet. So using materials that are abundantly available in our environment. So simple iron and the nitrogen to create a material that would resemble or, or have a very similar magnetic properties as, as the materials that we just discussed. How does this help us out? Well, it helps us out provided that we can achieve the right scale. We would, we would basically no longer be dependent on these rare earth materials and it, it would in turn stabilize the supply chain and of course lead to a, to a significantly better cost position for these materials. Okay. So, Sanisha, the, the magnets that Niron is producing, these iron nitride magnets, how do they compare with the permanent magnets that use rare earth materials? Okay, so, speaking strictly from the material properties, if we were to do one-to-one -one comparison, they are, they are not identical, but the properties of the materials are significant enough where with some design adjustments, uh, we believe we can achieve same and in some cases even better levels of performance than what we have with the rare earth magnets. The event you were at outside of Minneapolis was a groundbreaking. They're they're ready to build a manufacturing facility for these iron nitride magnets. How long have we, Stellantis, and you personally been interested in this technology? So Stellantis has invested in Niron about two years ago, and the company has been on our radar probably radar for probably three or four years in, in total. Okay. Are there other options to rare earth material magnets out there besides Niron? Over the over the years, there have been other attempts to get to a similar solution. But today, we're not aware of, of anyone who's this far along in, in, in creating a material with this level of performance. Okay. So once Niron reaches a point where it's producing quantities of, of their iron nitride magnets, does this open up possibilities for us in terms of electric motor design? Do the properties of these new materials allow us to gain efficiencies or make the, the electric motors better? I think it does open significant opportunities. The opportunities to improve the efficiency are probably less, but the, the opportunities to reduce the overall size and cost are probably more, more significant ones that, that, that we are interested in. And Really, what's important to also understand that that it's not just the electric motors, but it's it's all of the other components uh, that are maybe thermally less demanding than electric motors that that will have significantly faster adaptation of this technology. So, Sunisha, you had mentioned that you're always been interested in in electric propulsion and and mobility. Did you think that at this point in your career we would reach a point where you're actually working with a brand new material to try and improve our EVs? I think from my personal perspective, for, for many years, for probably two decades, I have hoped that there would be significant efforts in material development that we would, that we would get there. But being an engineer and understanding the complexity of that task, I am, I am pleasantly surprised that, that Niron is where, where, where they are with, with this development. 
So, Sunisha, as we continue to work on EVs and, and other mobility technology, someone who's interested in, in joining our industry today, what, what kind of advice might you offer them if, if they wanted to come in and work at what you do? So I can really only speak to my own experience and, and let young engineers uh, draw draw some conclusions from that. But uh, I, I will say that working in the car industry and working propulsion has been extremely rewarding. It is such a direct and profound impact on the customer relative to what we do in propulsion. You actually don't need to be a car enthusiast to, to appreciate the technology and the value add uh, to, the, to the overall vehicle. Yeah. And so it can be extremely rewarding, uh, extremely rewarding career for many, many years to come. I, I'm moved to ask, what was your first car, Sanisha? And do you still have uh, it? My, I, no, I, I don't have it. I have moved here from, from Europe. And so it, that would have been a difficult move. But my first car was actually one of our brands. Uh, I drove Opel Cadet, which was a back in the 90s. I, I, I should ask, what are you driving today? Today, I drive a Wagoneer S, our, our latest electric vehicle that, that, we, that we put in the market, and, and uh, I will say that's absolutely fantastic. So I guess one final question for you, Sanisha. How important are partnerships like what we're doing with Nyron to, to help us improve mobility in the future? I think they are they are extremely important. That the partnership really demonstrates Stellantis's commitment to technology and bringing the new cutting edge technologies to our products. When we partner with places like Nyron, we bring our scale. We leverage the entrepreneurship and know how experts in the adjacent industry to do that even faster. So extremely extremely important. I think. Excellent. Well, Sanisha Djokovic. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed this conversation and you're very generous with your time and, and I appreciate it on behalf of my listeners. And speaking of the listeners, thank all of you for tuning in to the Stellantis Tech and AI podcast, where we speak with some of the brightest minds in the tech and automotive industries. We invite you to follow Stellantis Tech and AI on LinkedIn and Instagram to join the conversation. Stay updated on what's ahead and be a part of the community exploring the fast line of tech and AI in the auto world. We'll see you again soon.